Okay guys, so this is actually quite a random cool thing. Um, we're going to show you guys the behind the scenes physio, basically how we keep these horses sound. So this is Wessel. He's either 18 or 19, I can't remember, he's one of the two. I've had Wessel for so long, he's part of our family. But he is 18 or 19, still competes Grand Prix, doesn't have any medicine in him to keep him sound. He's just sound because he's sound. And this sort of physio work is what we actually do to keep that happening and make sure that those horses stay good. So I'm going to introduce you to Ian and he's going to tell, we're going to ask some questions and he'll have a look at where. This is Ian everyone. Hello. <laughs> we could not live without Ian. And Ian, you're a human physio as well, aren't you? Uh, osteopath. Yep. Osteopath. Yep. So Human and equine. Now, Wessel has said he's 18. And as we all get older, we tend to have obesity issues. He does too. <laughs> he works very hard, Mr. Wessel, but we do spend our entire lives trying to keep him with his weight off. <laughs> um, and why do you think that's important, Ian? You're always nagging me about making him a little bit leaner. Uh, it's just, again, the same as with people, it's putting more pressure on the, with the weight, you're putting more pressure on the joints, which is, especially with the older horse, is, is not helping because the wear and tear is going to be there anyway, but extra weight puts more pressure on and that can then cause more problems. So, and he's got probably what, a good 100 kilos to lose. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more, but he's, he's doing well. It's, it's always hard as you get older to lose the weight. It so. really is, yeah. Ian knows them really, really well. He feels them, how they feel different from each time to each time. Like us all, we've always got something wrong with us. So generally the horses <laughs> always do as well, but it's figuring out what's a problem and what is because of um, work. So for example, if we're working a lot on Piaz between last time he saw him and now, he might be sore in certain areas. If he's had completely time off with nothing, he might be stiffer, for example. So it's not necessarily the expectation that Ian goes, nothing wrong with him, he's fine. <laughs> it's the expectation that he goes, this is within normal realm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're always, the thing is you're asking them to do some very athletic movements with the dressage, so there's always a lot more pressure and strain. And you've got to treat them like they are athletes as well. So, yeah. you know, what he, people, athletes, the humans, they get treated regularly. You know, they have physio, they have massages. So same with the horses, you've got to kind of keep on top of their structure and make sure everything moves correctly. And it's quite funny how much the horse athlete is the same as a person athlete, isn't yep. it? Like we ice their legs to keep their legs cool. Yep. I mean, you hear stories of, um, uh, football players getting an ice bath and things yes, like that. Yeah. Um, so it's all not dissimilar. No, exactly. They've got to, you know, for the work they want to do, you've got to keep them as, as mobile and as uh, supple as possible to allow you to get do the work that you want to get out of them, really. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you're loving the information that we're giving you. Please subscribe, because then you never miss out on anything. The bigger we can get our subscriptions, the bigger we can make this channel, and the cooler things that we can do. So please help us grow so that we can help you grow as a rider and make your riding success happen. So what are you doing there? So she's just basically feeling the range of movement through the shoulder. So you can see you've got a nice rotation through there, which is also opening up through the chest, which is really good. And that's then just giving it a bit more of a stretch through. So, which is, this is all very good. This is what it should be looking like. And um, is this what you'd expect for a horse of his age or is it actually it's, age? it's better than... Better than a horse of his, his age. age. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's awesome. And we've always just been very, very careful. So we make sure that he doesn't be ridden in deep surfaces. We make sure that we give him a variety of in the arena and hacking. And we also make sure that he stays in work. The temptation when they're older is to stop riding them. Um, and our temptation is when they start to get a bit sticky and they start to get a little bit old feeling that we back off the work. And actually, we just need to go, okay, so they're changing a bit because they're old, let's find different exercises for them to help them regain their suppleness and regain their, their movement versus stopping. Because if you just stop, they tend to go down very, very quickly. Yeah. Would yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, no, I'd agree. And I said, you know, nice thing with older horses is it's also keeping their brain active, making them think, make them work. Um, because I think like you say, if you just throw, let, let them retire and throw them in the field, they do go downhill because I think horses are very much like people. They like to keep. They like to have something, a, a, a reason, something to do all the time, and that's part of it. I think as well that they just want to enjoy yeah. work, and they do enjoy it. They, you know, as they say, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. But you know, horses they 
if they want to work, they do like that stimulation and it is good for them. Just really stretching him through his hamstrings at the moment, just to open it all up, which is a really good stretch. He's nicely making his way to the front foot, which is good. So we can just do a bit of work through. So you can just see the hop nicely flexing through there. And then we can just move up into the stifle and the hip. Oh boy. We know he's a little bit tight just in his glutes on this side, so it's just if you just it's like if you're the person, if you catch the knot and it's sore, you do you say ouch. <laughs> he can't say ouch, so yeah. And where it is sore, is that um, within the realm of what's expected, or is that yeah. actually an area that we need to work on a bit? No, it's, it's, it's just kind of normal for him. Okay. And I said, you know, the, the glutes are massive muscles on the, the horses, and I say when you're getting them doing PF work and making them sit. This is the engine, so they're getting a lot of pressure. Yeah, okay. So they do get tight, which is, like I say, normal for what it is. Yeah, okay, great. And again, you can really see, and is that symmetrical? Is that pretty much the same? Yeah, it's pretty much the same. As you can see, there's a little bit more reaction through the, the muscle on this side. Okay. See oh, yeah, the, you see it in his head. And you can see the muscle twitch as well. So it's a little bit tighter in the muscle in here, uh -huh. but we'll do some work on that in a minute to improve that. And what would that sort of um, represent if you were riding it? Would that be like uh, less bend in the half pass, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it, it just find that you won't be getting as much extension through on this right fore. Okay. So he, he'll be a little bit less shorter stride and not wanting to actually fully let go. Okay. Um, so if you put him out to his maximum and extended trot, that leg might be not as straight as the yeah, other one. Yeah. Okay. And also you might, like say with the lateral shoulder work, you might just lose a bit of the bend through the neck as well. Yeah. Because this lower neck is just going to get tight because of the muscle. Okay. You can do a lot of uh, suppling work while riding and that kind of really helps enforce what we've loosened off and then that can really help. Perfect. So, yeah, so now that Ian's told us that and that that's a small issue that he can feel, then between Ian trips, we work on that on the horse. And at what point, so he, um, he's obviously an older horse yeah. and of a high level, um, and often we might need, you know, these horses at this level might need vet help as well, quarters yeah. and things like that. He, we're very lucky, I think this is fairly unheard of, a horse <laughs> of his age with no, no help at all. Yeah. Um, but at what point would you then say to somebody, like when you're working on them, when would you say, hey, I think we also need vet help as well? What would be the yeah, tipping point for you? It's more if it's kind of reoccurring problems. If I'm seeing a horse two or three times and I've got the same problem keeps coming back, okay. you start going, well, why? Because yeah. um, hopefully with treatment from the sales to loosen off and then with the ridden work, you should see improvement. Yeah. Um, so normally if they're, you know, an issue that is kind of like say you see it two or three times and it's the same thing and it keeps coming back yeah. then you kind of want to see maybe speak to the vet to get some more advice of what could be something else might be causing that okay so basically if you hit a plateau consistently yeah or it gets worse or or, yeah. or, or doesn't improve at all yeah then you would look at other, other things yes. as well yeah okay i bet i'm assuming you still on top of that is needed too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah as you say because hopefully well depending what the vet would find or find, you know, then yeah. you normally, you know, you'd have to have either some treatment from the vet and then as well have some rehab work afterwards. Yeah. Okay. But if we know more specifically what an issue is from the vet, then we can then work on it. Yeah, tune the uh, treatment to be more specific to that Perfect. as well. And, and really, I think this is something that people don't realise is there sort of is no end point of success, ultimately. Um, <laughs> with horses, it's this constant I don't want to use the word battle, but I suppose it is. <laughs> it's the constant battle of keeping them happy, keeping them sound and preventing injury versus just cruising along and waiting for an injury to happen. Like I say, it's, it's, sometimes like I say, it's preventive is better than the cure. So, 100%. You know, the more you can keep on top and keep the, the horse and supple and loose, hopefully you'll have less problems. And like I say, and you get the horse also will carry on working t for a lot longer in life and not be back and forwards all the time. Yeah. And yeah, just stretching the hamstring on this side. He is actually a little bit tighter through his pelvis on this side, so we're gonna have to release that. It sounds like a really simple thing, but it is the simplicity which keeps the horses sound. It's not really complicated, is it? It's just yeah. consistency. Yeah, and also I find sometimes I say to people is like, also just take photos of your horse stood up. So then, you know, you can look at them and then in two months, three months, you look back and take another picture and you can compare the two 
You see, you know, is a more muscle development? Have I lost muscle or is there another issue which also helps, you know, just give you that balance to know what's going on with the horse as well, which is really good. That's a really good one. And what are you doing here, eh? So just trying to loosen them up Ooh. through his palm. Oh boy. He doesn't, he's not as, not as, he doesn't like this one as much. Yeah, he's licking and chewing, which is a nice sign. So he is, you know, he's nice, he's relaxed, even though he's... So then how do you differentiate, um, Ian, the difference between when it's uber stiff and he's not turning because he doesn't, because he can't, or whether, where it's a brain thing and he's just... Like um, a bit of it as well is when you feel through the muscles, because if it's really tight, you normally have a, like a muscle reaction as well. Okay. Yep. Like with him, you know, it's more... Because <laughs> now he's actually relaxing into it. Okay. He's actually got a nice consistent bend through the neck. Okay. So it's kind of, you do get sometimes, like I say, when they're really tight, he will get very disjointed and you kind of de you get like a cogwheel action with the bend. Yep, okay. But this is all very nice. And... Oh, that's great. Good boy, Wes. Look at that. Good boy, see? Get there eventually, don't we, mate? <laughs> and that's why you can see now he's a lot happier and easier this side. So I've got less fight happening on this side now because he knows we're not doing anything horrible and he's a lot happier to stretch, which is really good. <laughs> um, one quick question before I go. I'm just, I've been curious about this as well. Let's assume you don't know his age. Yeah. And, but we know his level. Yeah. Where does he sit? In t is he good in general or is he good for an age, if you know what I mean? Yeah, well, to be fair, for the work he's doing, because you know that the Grand Prix stuff, it, it, you're asking a lot of questions and you're putting a lot of pressure on. Yeah. So from, from that point of view, he's in really good shape, you know, physically to be able to cope with that work, okay. that, that amount of pressure. Yeah. Um, and like you say, then you kind of, you add the age in there, it's even more impressive. Too. So if he was a nine year old, you'd be still be very impressed with how he is. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Good work, Wessel. Good work. <laughs> <laughs>